All right, this is our standardized test for California in 11th grade. I thought I'd just go over some of these problems right here. And, and really, I don't want you to memorize these problems. I really just kind of want you to see the strategies I use to solve these. So really, there are three primary strategies I would recommend. Number one is really identify what they're asking you. So really try and identify the point of the question. Number two is keep track of time. Hardest problem on here, about the same weight as the easiest problem on here. So you don't want to spend a lot of time on a really hard one and race through the easier ones. So keep track of time. And thirdly, mark up the exam as much as possible. And that's for two reasons. The first reason is so you don't make any careless mistakes, so no mistakes. As you mark it up, you highlight important ideas and what you're doing. And the third reason is when, I mean, the second reason, when you come back to it, you know, if you move on and then want to come back to that problem, all your work's there so you don't have to start it all over again. So it's more efficient when you mark it up if you come back and check. So those are the three strategies you should kind of work on, identifying what they're asking, keeping track of time, pacing yourself well, and mark up the exam. That's not just this exam. It is actually every standardized math exam, whether it's the SAT or whether it's your contractor's exam. Um, those are all kind of key test-taking strategies. So let's take a look at this first one. So select the expression that is equivalent to m squared minus 25. I identify this as factoring. I notice there's no middle term, so it's a perfect square. So I'm just going to split that to factors of m squared or m and m. Factors of 25 or 5 and 5. One positive, one negative. I look down to my solutions. There it is. Uh, and none of the other ones make any sense. And as I look at the other solutions, I can see their intent is to see whether or not you knew it was a perfect square, right? This is going to have a middle term, this has a middle term, that has a middle term. So if you re recognize this as a perfect square problem, then there's really only one possible solution. Okay, down to number two here. Uh, identify it. Well, this is looking like I'm looking at the problem, it's the square root, and I'm looking at the solutions and their exponents. So the problem is a conversion from a square root to an exponent. So let me just go see if I knew it, write down the rule. If I have a square root of x, this thing's called a square root because there's a 2 here. You don't have to write the 2 because it is, in fact, a square meaning 2. And this is x to the 1. So the square root of x is the same as x to the 1 half. So I'm going to use that tool here. There's no 2 here, but it's implied. So this is 3 to the 8 over 2. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So this is equivalent to 3 to the 4th. There's a solution right there. Um, and then these are all, you know, that's a good distractor there. Okay, let me go down to this third one here. So this third problem down here is click the table whether each equation has no real solution, one real solution, or infinitely many solutions. So reading that, um, I'm really trying to figure out, you know, like, are these things solvable? And if so, what kind of answers are they going to have? So on the first one here, I'm going to cross multiply and get 20x equals 20x. As I look at that, I can see that no matter what I plug in for x, um, is always going to hold true. A million times 20 is equal to a million times 20. So there are many solutions, infinitely many solutions. The second one, 3x, I know it's small here, 3x equals 4 plus 5x. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides to get 2x. Subtract 4 from both sides, negative 4. And I can see that there's only one solution. x is going to have only one possible solution. So I'm going to check that. Lastly, right here, uh, I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. So I have 2x plus 3 is equal to a negative 6. So as I think about this and I think about what, what is the point of this problem, what am I going to square root that gives me a negative? 
Well, that's the point of the problem. There's nothing that's going to work, and that's why it's no real solutions. So I didn't spend too much time on here. Um, so I'm pacing myself well. Again, I'm really thinking about, like, what is the intent of the problem? I'm keeping track of time, and I mark up my exam so I could go back. I always work in pencil. I'm just using a black felt pen here um, so you could see it a little better. Okay, here's another problem. Let's see. Enter the expression equivalent to this whole thing plus that whole thing plus that whole thing. There's a lot there. It looks really intimidating, but I bet it's probably not too hard because I identify it as probably just adding similar terms together. Okay? So let me get rid of these parentheses. There's no multiplication at all. So I'll get rid of those parentheses. Get 3x squared plus 2y squared minus 3x plus 2x squared plus 1y squared minus 2x. And then this is a negative here. I know it's small. I've got to distribute that negative through the whole quantity. Negative x squared minus 3y squared minus x. And now I'm going to combine similar terms. I'm going to mark it up so I don't make any mistakes. 3x squared plus 2x squared is 5x squared minus 1x squared is 4x squared. 2y squared plus 1y squared, 3y squared, minus 3y squared. Those things are just going to disappear. Minus 3x, minus 2x, minus 5x. And then that's it. Oh, no, there's one more x there. So it's minus 5x minus x minus 6x. So I have 4x squared minus 6x. Um, right, enter an expression equivalent to all of that using fewest number of possible terms. So I could pull out a 2 and an x, but that's going to actually not simplify it at all, and it's going to increase the number of terms. So this problem is really about combining similar terms and simplifying. All right, I think I'll just do one more problem here. So as I'm looking at this problem, I have one ratio equal to another ratio, so that's a proportion. And I'm just kind of glancing down these answers, saying basically check this person's work and see if it's right. So before I even do this, I'm just kind of looking at this. The way I would solve it is I would do that times that, 3 times 7, 21, is equal to that times that, x times x minus 4. So I bet if there's going to be a mistake, it'll probably be in distribution here. So let's see. Here they cross multiply to get that x, x minus 4, that's right. Then they cross multiply the second time to get to 21. So that's where I started. Distribute that x through that quantity, that's right. Recognizing it is a quadratic, so subtracting 21 from both sides, that's right. Then I'm going to factor it. Factor is a 21 or 7 and a 3. Middle term is negative 4x, that looks good. And then zero sum property means either this equals zero or that equals zero. So either x equals negative 3 or it equals 7. That's all right. They did that thing right. Students solved the equation correctly. I'm not going to mark that just yet. The student made an error in step 2. No. Student made an error in step 5. No. Only x equals 7 is a solution. Well, that is a good point. Even though this is solved correctly, you do need to take those solutions and plug them in. I'll take that negative 3 and plug it into the original equation. 3 over negative 3. 3 over negative 3 minus 4 negative 7 is equal to negative 3 over 7. That's true. Let me plug the 7 in and see if that works. 3 over 3 is equal to 7 over 7. That's true as well. So actually, they did this whole thing correctly. Those are the solutions. So I mark it up a lot. I eliminate answers that don't make sense. I time myself well. And I really try and identify what I'm being asked. So I'm hoping this video helps you not do well on this test, but really develop strategies to do well on all math tests. And you know, no matter what you choose to do with your life, you probably will have to do some sort of standardized math test become a contractor, a pilot's license, uh, college entry exam, whatever it is, 
uh, it usually shows an ability to logically work through problems and keep track of what you're doing. So that's kind of what these strategies are for. And finally, let me reiterate, really try and identify what the problem's asking you. If you do that before you even really get started, it'll really help you. Don't get fixed on, oh no, I'm sure that's what they're asking, but really try and identify it. Keep track of time. Pacing is probably one of the biggest things to do well. And then mark up the exam for two reasons. So you you're, don't make any careless mistakes. And if you go back to that problem, uh, you don't have to start all over again. So hopefully that helps. Good luck. Practice, practice, practice. That's the only way we learn.